Hi everyone, good to see you all again. Today we are going to learn how to create an abstract Ganesha using the one stroke method of painting. We have been learning a lot about one stroke painting and if you are a beginner, I kindly request you to practice the basic strokes and then begin to create this abstract one stroke Ganesha. If you are new to my channel, kindly check on my other tutorials for you to get a deeper insight into one stroke painting as well as my other tutorials on Ganeshas. For your convenience, I have given the links in the description box. Now let's get started with our one stroke abstract Ganesha. Before we begin, let's see what all supplies we need. You will need a Teclon hair flat brush for this activity. Now I've taken here a variety of uh, flat brushes here. This is brush number 12 Teclon hair flat brush from Faber Castell. These are synthetic hair brushes and uh, they work great for one stroke painting. I've taken our brush number 12, brush number 10, flat brush number 8 and then flat brush number 6. So I'll be using all these brushes for my abstract Ganesha and I'll also be using a script brush like number four and number one and then you'll also need a practice paper you can choose any kind of a practice paper i've taken now a smooth uh, cartridge paper or an ivory board or a tack board and a cardstock anything works for this but make sure it's a smooth surface so that the, uh, the flat brushes slides on the surface for you you will need a pencil and an eraser just in case you need to make an outline of your abstract Ganesha. Uh, I'll be using acrylic colors for this tutorial and uh, these are Faber Castle uh, liquid acrylic colors, the fabric colors, uh, because they're fluid, the consistency is just perfect for you to do one stroke painting. So I've chosen this medium. A cup of water, a flat tray to flap your flat brush, a small uh, palette where you can pour in the colors and use them and a waste cloth or a tissue paper. Now let's get started with our one stroke abstract Ganesha. As a first step to start with your abstract one stroke Ganesha you need to make a, a basic outline. I'm not going to draw the Ganesha here instead I'm just going to make the Ganesha go over a flower petal. So I'm just imagining a hibiscus flower petal here and I'm just making a rough outline of the flower petal. Now remember the hibiscus flower has five petals so we are just going to make a rough demarcation of these five petals that I'll be using it for my one stroke painting. I'm just making a very faint outline. I hope you can see it on my camera otherwise I'll just show it to you a little more dark. So like this we will make a basic floral outline shape. like that. So let's get our outline ready like this. Just make a slight demarcation of where you're going to have the petals and where you're going to have the leaf like this. Once when you have the flower basic shape ready, you will now draw a leaf shape. Same way, we're going to have another leaf shape here. Once when these are ready, you're ready to start with your abstract Ganesha. As a first step, we will see how we can load our flat brush. Right now, I've taken my synthetic hair brushes number 10 uh, in my flat brush and this is a, a synthetic hair brush from Faber Castell. So I'm going to use this flat brush for my uh, abstract Ganesha. So I'm just going to load and show you how to load these brushes. Whether your brushes are short or long edged, it doesn't matter. We can still do a good job with one stroke painting. Now let's get started with the loading process. Now for loading, I'm just going to load the chisel edge of my flat brush with two different contrasting colors. One color is going to be an extremely dark color. The other color is going to be extremely light color. So I've taken two colors in my flat brush now. I'm just going to flap this on my tray to and fro, to and fro without changing the track we are flapping it. So just flap it two, three times. And once when you finish flapping, you will see that the color is working into your brush halfway. But you need to cover the color till two third. Okay, so make sure you load it again the same way and flap it on your palette to work the color two third into your brush. 
Once when all your loading is done like this, when you finish loading it 2-3 times like this, as a last color, as a last flap, you will take a little white on the tip of your brush and a little green on the extreme. Just flap it slightly and you're ready to stroke. Now we are going to practice our leaf stroke here. You will have seen the basic leaf movement in my previous tutorials. So what we are going to do now is just a slight variation with that, tutorial, with, with that leaf. So what you are going to do is actually mark the same way the V shape like this. And then you are going to flex and turn your brush in such a way that you will get a shaded leaf like this. Do you see that? So again, we will load the same colors and you will rotate your paper so that it's easy to work. You can flex it and you can work it like that. So this is our leaf stroke where you can add the center vein like that. Now this movement is actually the shell movement. So for the shell movement, you actually load the color and you flap it on your tray and you wiggle your brush in such a way that you create a shell. This is the shell movement. You're going to use the same technique to create our petals for the hibiscus flower. So if you notice, I'll show you how large you can do this. Can you see that? Can you see the difference? So this is how we'll be creating the petals for the hibiscus flower. Now let's get started how to do this on the final project. Now let's begin working on our leaves for our abstract Ganesha base. So I've loaded my flat brush with the sap green, lemon yellow and a little white. I've loaded it two, three times and it's all ready for me to begin with my strokes. So let's get started with our stroke. Now I'm just going to wiggle my brush in, out, in, out, in, out and I'm going to taper it like that. The same way, we will load the colors. It's important to load your color for every single stroke. Only then you will be able to get this finish. So ensure to load it every time. Now, if the leaf is going underneath the flower, it's still okay. You can just overlap that a little bit and then wiggle your brush and taper. You will add the center vein there. So like this, we will complete the other leaf and get it ready. As our leaves are getting dry, we will now proceed with the petals for our hibiscus flower. For the hibiscus flower petals, I've taken now brush number 12, Synthetic Hair Faber Castell. Again, it's a flat brush. It's a Teclon hair flat brush. The brushes are, bristles are a little long. It's still okay because we'll be making wide petals, nice broad ones we'll be making. Okay, for that, we're just going to start loading. So I'm just going to take on one corner of my flat brush, the chisel tip, I'm just going to take crimson red. The other corner, I'm just going to take lemon yellow. So those are the two colors I'm going to be using for my hibiscus flower petals. For that, I'm just going to flap to and fro. Now while you do this flapping, it's very important that you don't keep on making this track very long, okay? Just keep it short, approximately two to two and a half inches. That should, not be, that should be the maximum for your track, okay? So just keep loading it to and fro, to and fro, and work in the colors two third, like how I'm doing. Since your brush, this time it's a br bigger brush, so you will be taking a lot of color and you'll be working it like how I'm doing now. So let's load it again. Two, three times we have to do this. Ensure that you don't change the track. In case if you do it by mistake, all you need to do is to wipe the tip on your cloth. For example, if you just go and take uh, yellow on the red side, if you load it up like this, it's still okay. All you need to do is to just take your waste cloth and just wipe the color like that on the waste cloth and it just goes away. So it's easy to clean up that way in case if you make a mistake. So like this, let's load our brush two-third and get it ready. As a last flap, we'll be 
taking white on the yellow side and again red and we'll be loading it a little bit flapping it to get the required color shading once when you have this ready we are ready to stroke let's begin with our stroke now using the 12 brush we are going to make nice big petals so I'm just going to keep my red color out and the yellow color in so that I get a shading like that so watch here so we're just going to wiggle our brush it's a flat brush we're just going to go carefully wiggle 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 now if you get breaks like this don't worry just go load the color again flap it and just repeat the strokes So like this, we are going to wiggle and create one tier of petals. Okay, so let's do this for all these four petals and get it ready. I'm just going to complete my last petal for this first layer of petals. Now that we have completed the first layer, this has to dry for a few minutes and then you are ready to move to the second layer. Now once when your base 5 petals are dry, we will move on to the second layer of petals. We will load the same colors for the second layer of petals, the same yellow, the same red. We are flapping it on our palette with the 12 brush, a little bit of white on the edge, flapping it again and you are ready to stroke. So when you do the second layer, it's going to be slightly uh, smaller in size and you're just going to try to fit it right over there on the V-shape there. So just watch this how I'm doing. So this is going to be our second layer. A little more tight petals is what we will be doing. it. So like this, we will add a few more on the remaining four petals and we will get it ready. So I'm just going to complete the second tier of petals. So with that, I'll be completing the first and second layer of petals. Now once when this base has to dry totally, okay, so once when it's totally dry, you'll be ready to work the abstract Ganesha right on the center there. As a next step, we are going to start loading our flat brush number 10 synthetic hair brushes, Teclon hair bristles from Faber Castell. Now, wash your brush, dry it on a piece of tissue or waste cloth. It should be damp enough for you to load the next set of colors. Now, we are going to load orange, peach and a little white. Okay, so it's actually the flesh tint which I've taken here to give the skin effect for Lord Ganesha. So, one corner of the chisel edge. I'm just loading orange, the other corner I'm loading flesh tint. Now we're just going to flap this on our tray to and fro, to and fro, to and fro. And you're going to work the color two thirds just like how we did for the leaf and the flower petals. So let's work it and get it ready. As a last flap, you'll be taking a little white with orange. So I'm just going to load some more orange and flesh tint one more time. Just going to flap it. Three times I'm doing it so that the color works in two third to my brush. Once when my loading is ready like this, I'm loading in the color, flapping it, just taking a little white on the edge and I'm ready to work on my stroke. Now, to start with the Ganesha, the most important thing is the order that you go. Now, the order will be like things which go behind will be done first. So, we are just going to do the tummy part of the Ganesha first. I'm going to have the orange out and the flesh tint in so that I can get a beautiful shading. We are just going to make a one stroke circle. So, watch this how we are doing it. We are just going to center it like this. Just going to make tummy part of Lord Ganesha. You can go over the stroke 
a few times because the red color might dominate the orange color. So go over it two, three times till it gets opaque. When you're happy with your shading, you can move on to the next set of strokes. Now that's going to be the tummy part of Lord Ganesha. Next step is going to add the head. So let's see how we can do this. We load our brush again and we'll come to do the head part of the Ganesha. As a next step, you're going to start working on the head part of the Ganesha. I've taken the same colors on my flat brush and I'm going to start with this. It's kind of a, a huge comma stroke is what you're going to do. So keep your flat brush like this slightly angular and just flap your brush all the way down tapering it towards the tummy like that okay so you can go over the stroke one more time to make it even more opaque once when your basic stroke is there it has to dry for a few minutes to proceed further with the next set of strokes the next step after doing the trunk part of the Ganesha, we will now do the side profile face. For that, I'm just going to turn my paper slightly and we're just going to make this one stroke leaf stroke. We'll make this one stroke leaf movement two, three times. And if in case if you feel that you're covering your previous stroke, you can always go back and you can work on the stroke like that. So like this, you will get the side profile face of Lord Ganesha. And now you will add the ears. To add the ears, we will be using the same colors, loaded, and we will be making the one stroke leaf movement again for the ears like that. As a next step, as our base is getting dry, we will now start working on the dhoti part of our Lord Ganesha. For that, I'm just going to take Persian blue on one corner of my flat brush and the other corner, I'm just going to take some magenta. Taking these two colors, I'm just going to flap this to and fro on my palette. Make sure that you have a uniform track like this. We are going to do this two, three times like the regular way, like how we did before. So that two third of our brush gets loaded with the color. Loading it the third time. And then for my last flap, I'm just going to take some white on the magenta side and little Persian blue. I'm just going to flap it slightly so that I get that color. Now that we have loaded it, we are now ready to stroke. We're just going to make the one stroke shell movement like a half leaf, like how we did this leaf, the same way like a half leaf, you're just going to make the either sides of the legs. So for that, we're just going to do the stroke. As a first step, you're just going to make a huge petal stroke starting from here having the darker color out and the lighter color in. I'm just going to make a huge petal like this. So that gives you one leg shape of Lord Ganesha. Same way, the other side, you're just going to load in the same colors, same method, flap it, and then we're just going to make the other side. We're just going to make one more huge petal shape. Now having this as your guide, we will be working in the wiggle movement inside the shape. So let's wait for it to dry and then we will work in the wiggle movement. Now that this base is dry for the legs, now we can add the frills on the dhoti. So to add the frill effect for the dhoti, we'll be doing the wiggle movement just like the movement that we did for our petals and the leaves, okay? So just going to wiggle the brush like this, We're just going to take the brush all the way up there is going to make a wiggle like that okay wiggle wiggle 
wiggle, wiggle, and taper. So same way, we're going to do the wiggle on this side so that it gives the frill effect for the dhoti. So now that we have the frill effect for the dhoti, it has to dry and then we will move on further with the other strokes. As the next step, I've taken brush number 6 Teclon hair brush, synthetic hair from Faber Castell. Now I'm going to use this flat brush to do the shawl part of our abstract Ganesha. For this, I'm going to load light green on one corner of my flat brush and on the other corner, I'm just going to take a little yellow. And I'm going to flap this to and fro, to and fro, to and fro. Two third, we're going to load this with this color, light green, lemon yellow. Once when I finish loading it, I'm just going to add the third color to this. I'm just going to show you how it's going to be done. So for the third color is going to be little Persian blue and then flapping it like that. And little white flapping it like that. Now that our load is ready, we can start stroking it on our surface. So we're just going to make the shawl part of the Ganesha. So I'm just going to show you how to do that effect. So just keep the brush flat and just drag like this, two parallel lines, just like making an equal to, like this. So that will create the shawl effect. I'm going to load in the colors again. I'm just going to show you the same on the other side. So we're just going to drag the, like this. I'm just going to keep the lighter color out and the darker color in so that you will get the shading beautifully like this. Once when you have the shawl like that, this shawl will actually continue here on his shoulders. So we just need to take the same colors, load it the same way, and we will continue with the stroke from here, from the inner part, like that. same way in this gap. So let's fill this up and leave it to dry and we'll add the tussles. To add the tussles, it's very simple. We will load in the same color and we will just have to create two lines like this. I'm just going to take a little blue because it's not showing on my green base. So I'm just going to add two lines like that like a border and then we'll add the tussles add the tussles so like this you will create the effect of a shawl for Lord Ganesha now that this base has to dry when it is dry we will add the hands and the feet and other details as the next step, we are going to make the crown part of our abstract Ganesha in one stroke method. For that, I'm just going to take some gold acrylic paint with a little burnt sina and I'm going to flap it on my tray to and fro. Same method, two third we will load and we'll get it ready. Metallic colors are a little transparent, so make sure that you load it properly and you might have to go over the stroke a few more times to make it opaque. So after loading it like this, as a last stroke, I'm just adding a little blue on my brown side to make my brown a little deeper brown, like a Van Dicke brown. So then again, I'm adding a little more brown. I'm gonna flap it to get it dark. Now that I have my color ready, I'm just going to start with my stroke. For the stroke, I'm just going to do the crown part. So for the crown part, I'm just going to keep the dark color out and the lighter color in. So watch this now. I'm just going to make a band like that for the crown. And then we we'll load in the color again. We'll make another one more layer. And then the same way we will load the color. We will make one more band which is slightly smaller in size like that and then one more layer 
You can go over it a number of times if your color isn't opaque. Then the last layer, three layers. Leave this to dry for a while and then maybe if you want you can go over it one more time to make it even more darker. And at the end we will be adding this kind of a petal movement, the one stroke leaf movement like this for the crown. So once when you add these details, leave them to dry and you can further enhance it with dots and other details. As a next step, we are going to add the feet and hands for the Lord Ganesha. But since we are using a small brush number 6, the way of loading a small brush will be slightly different. You will take the lighter color first, flap it on your tray like this to and fro. I am taking now flesh tint. Work in first your flesh tint and then side load with little orange. So this way it's easy for you to load and get the same way of gradation of colors. So like this let's load it and get it ready to third to your flat brush number 6. Now we are going to make the hands for Lord Ganesha. So for that I am just going to keep the lighter color out and the darker color in. We are just going to rest this hand here on his lap to keep the sweet on his hand. So in one movement you will make the hand like this. Let it dry and if you want you can go over it one more time when it is dry. The same way let's see how we can do the uh, other hand which is the blessing hand. So for that, we will take the same colors and we will be doing this movement. We will be keeping your brush in 90 degrees and you will be creating a stroke like this. Okay, so press. Same way, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 fingers. You will press the 5 fingers like this and after you press it, you are just going to make a curve like that for the hand okay so let me show you this one more time I'm just going to load these two colors I'm going to go over the same stroke watch this I'm just doing first with my stroke like that okay and then I'm going to make a cup stroke like that so that way you will get the hand effect of Lord Ganesha same way we're going to do the same technique for the feet for the feet, we will be using the same colors, taking orange and peach, flapping it on my tray and we will be doing the feet. For the feet, again we are going to do the same effect, we are just going to keep the brush in 90 degrees, we are going to count the fingers, we are going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 fingers. And after you put the five fingers, just make a cup stroke like this. So that way you'll get the feet effect. Same way we will do the other feet and we'll get it ready. So as a next step, once when this base is all dry, you can start adding more details. You can take some little yellow paint to add the ladu on his hand with the back side of your brush. That way you will be able to do that in one stroke. Same way for the other details like the sacred thread which goes on his body. For that we will just use a flat brush. We will make a line in 90 degrees like that. And then we will also add his tusk. Then we will have to need to add his details on his face like the Vibhuti and then the Tilak and all details. So like this we will add a lot of other details and we will get it ready. So after adding those details you can now add the swastik sign on the blessing hand. And you will also add the decorations on his trunk.
all this you can use a script brush a pointed brush will work for this so all these details can be added at the end you can add the eyes and you can finish the Ganesha you can also use some gold paint at this point to add some more decorations to his crown you can just keep some dots like this and you can decorate it further you can make the ornaments in the same way in one stroke like this you can make a chain for him you can make a pendant the same ideas can be used so add these details and we will get it ready as a last step we will be doing the eyes for the eyes, we will just take the white paint and we will make a base filling like this and we will leave it to dry. Once when it is dry, we will add the details with black paint. The same way, you can also add the belly button with little red. Just add a dot there and it will give you the belly button effect. So like this, we can add these details. You could also go one more step further by using a round brush with little green and little yellow and you can make some tendrils like that to make it even more attractive. So like this, let's add a few tendrils and get it ready. After adding the dots for the jewelry details, you are now ready to do the eyes. The base white is now dry so that you can now add the details to the eye. I am adding the pupil. So like that. Now leave this orange to dry for a few minutes and then you are ready to outline the eyes. Once when the orange is dry, you can add his eyebrows, you can make the eyes and your painting will be ready for display. If you notice, I have taken the time to complete my abstract Ganesha using the one stroke method of painting. This takes some time for you to practice this and then bring this kind of a finish. So make sure you practice all the basic strokes before you go on to your fair project. I hope you like my tutorial in creating this one stroke method of painting of an abstract Ganesha. Wish you all a very happy Ganesh Chadurti. Thanks for watching.